it is Janet Metzger, and I want to welcome you to today's podcast in the Network Marketer's Den. And I have a special guest that's actually a friend of mine. I've known him a long time, gosh, almost 25 years, and we saw each other way back when, lost touch, and then we found each other again. So I'm really excited to bring to you today Tom Hansen. Tom, welcome. It's good to see you again. Um, you're a local guy, but with COVID, we haven't seen a lot of each other. So this is this is really great. So, yeah. so thanks for Tom, thanks for inviting me. By the way, to meet oh, excited to have you here. Conversation. Um, you know, Tom and I, like I said, we met several years ago. Actually, my husband met Tom, and uh, Tom is a financial advisor. Jerry kind of overheard his conversation. We worked together for a number of years. He helped us manage our our money. And then I took a new job, um, ended up with somebody new, but it just didn't feel right. So um, interestingly enough, I was at a networking event and ta-da, there was Tom's uh, just a few years ago. And I said to him, I said, we need to get back together. And I'm a huge believer in that um, you're a network marketer and as a network marketer, best part is you build a residual income. But you know what? you can build a residual income by starting to save. I think of myself, I started saving at my first job when I was eligible for profit sharing at 17 years old. But uh, I'm not a good saver. I'm very good at spending, I will will tell you that. But I have been able to, by working with an expert like Tom, I've been able to do it. And um, the only thing I like about money is spending it. I I like making it, I like spending it, but I don't wanna know anything about it, so. So Tom, I want to welcome you. You're with Transamerica Financial. You've been in this business about 25 years. So yep, just over 25 years now. Yeah, so. clearly a lot of success. And you know, you've know, you built a big team of 30 people that you work alongside. And even though you're in the Madison, Wisconsin area, you were just sharing with me that you have clients literally all over the world, but you can serve anybody that's in the United States for sure. You're licensed all over. So yeah, just recently um, I've done appointments in China. Uh, now that's a client from Wisconsin that now lives in China. Okay. In okay. Hawaii, San Francisco, all over the place. So yes. all over the place. Money's, you know, money's green, no matter, no, no matter where you're at. But you know, when you when you own a home based business and you're or you're just starting out, a lot of times people feel like they don't don't have the money and they don't know what to do. And I'll tell you what what I so appreciate about working alongside you, Tom, is that you act as if it's your money, so you're you're doing your best. But and you help the little guy, okay? Yeah. And a lot of us are just getting started, maybe in our businesses. We don't have, we think we don't have, we are not able to invest, so. Um, so that's why I thought you would be a perfect person to support the network marketers and direct sellers. And we've got people that are earning a little bit to those that are earning seven figures. So, but no matter what, the advice that you provide can help everybody. So Absolutely. Um, anything I missed about you that they, that everybody needs to know about you? Well, just a fun fact. I, I do have four children, but I just acquired three more over the weekend. I just got married, remarried. It's a second marriage. And she came to the table with three children. And I have four. So we have Holy a Brady bunch. That's, a, that's a big bunch. Yeah, it is a Brady, Brady bunch plus one. So that's amazing. So, you know, if in layman's terms, can you tell everybody what it is that you do? So the biggest thing is helping people prepare and plan for financial freedom and learning how to invest and grow their assets and even protect their wealth. So that's, I know that's a mouthful, but most people want to accomplish financial freedom or financial independence and and they don't plan to fail, but they fail to plan. So I help people have a plan for financial success. Okay. Okay. Absolutely makes sense. I mean, that's the old, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So you're absolutely right. So, so having been in this business for 25 years, I am sure you've seen kind of the good, the bad, and the ugly and some patterns. And can you share with us some of the biggest mistakes that you've seen people make a couple, three of the biggest mistakes that we want to avoid? Well, I was 29 years old, 25 years ago. uh, And uh, I sat down with someone that was getting started in our industry, a good friend of mine. And 
And he sat down and showed me a six step plan. And I'm like, oh my gosh, why didn't someone show me how to start doing this at 23 when I originally got married? Uh, and, and so the first thing is saving is a habit, but so is not saving. And at 29 years old, I already had the habit of not saving. And I would say most Americans have that habit. They just don't have someone that helps them set up that automatic monthly investment where they're growing and accumulating. The second biggest mistake is they try and do it themselves. And, and I'm gonna use an example. I know how to work on a car. I used to work on my 65 Plymouth Belvedere way back when, but somewhere along the way, cars started getting more complex. Yes. And I learned better to go to a mechanic that has all of the tools and training and does it every day. The same is true with financial stuff. Some people try and do it on their own. They say, oh, I can go do that on the internet. And they can, but they're probably not gonna do as good a job and have the results that they would have if they worked with a professional. And the third probably key big mistake for someone that's already starting to accrue some, some assets is they let emotion get in the way. They either, whether it's panic, they go through some kind of a market downturn like last March or back in 2008 or 2000 through 2002. And they, they pull money out of, of investments when the market is down and they miss the corresponding upswing. And so they lock in their losses or vice versa, they jump on some new fad investment and say, oh, I can make a lot of money in this. I'm hearing this is going up. And uh, on average, I'd say greed and panic are the two emotions that get in the way of people succeeding. Sure, sure. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting when you talk about that, because that's what I hear people say, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're at an event and people are talking and say, oh, well, this is the hottest stock and this and that. And to me, it sounds like you'd have to be so on top of all these things. And, you know, unless that's what you want to sit or sit and do all day is watch all of these things. It'd be pretty tough. So, so am I hearing you say you actually watch people's money for them instead of them doing it themselves? Absolutely. And, and, and I have the tools and I actually have the money managers that that's all they do every day is they literally watch my clients assets and make adjustments. And you know that because you're personally a client sure, of mine. Sure. But, help people make good decisions, but, but more importantly, help them avoid making bad decisions by knowing their money is being managed and, and, and protected. And so, yes, that's okay. what I do. Is I make sure people don't let the emotion get in the way and make mistakes. Because, because money is emotional, you know? I mean, it's, it, it, yeah, it, oh, gosh, I have, I have admit, been there. But some of, some of my uh, friends that are one is a pastor. He makes bad decisions because he gets very emotional about money. And I don't want to see people make bad decisions with their money. Right, right. And and for you, you're, you know, it, it's it's just money. But for a person, it's, you know, it's their life. It's what they've invested in all of the time. So, so you had mentioned, um, I wrote this down, that saving is a habit, but not saving is a habit. And, and I, I'm a hundred percent, and I, I I talk about that it takes time to develop a habit. But what what would you say to somebody? You know, we just went through. Um, you know, fortunately, we you know things are opening up even here in Wisconsin, and um, businesses are on the upswing. What would you say to somebody that says, I don't have that money right now to invest, and I need to take all of that money, catch up on my bills? and that type of thing, how, how does somebody who just maybe has a feeling that they, this is the word I hear, I can't afford to invest. What would you say to somebody like that? Well, I, I have a friend of mine, when someone says, I have no money to invest, I say, you don't have a dollar? Well, I have a dollar. Also, you do have some money. And so we actually convince ourselves that we don't have any money. But what if someone starts with 25 or $50 a month? You know, having someone help them just start, even if it's a short-term just savings plan to build that emergency fund. And, and also, rather than doing it by piecemeal, where they have someone that handles maybe their insurance, someone else who handles their investment, a bank, that, what if they actually had someone that says, let's look at the whole plan and, and let's get that debt paid off? Because I do, I do believe people should live debt-free. What if they could actually pay off their debt? What if they right. could also at the same time be building an emergency fund and long-term savings? And, and really had, instead of a piecemeal approach, they actually had someone that sat down and showed them how to do it and, and fit it all together. So all together. That's, 
that's one thing is, is and, and so setting up an automatic savings or investment plan is probably the best idea. You talked about you doing that when you were like 18, 19 years old. Right, right. Yeah, they, I never saw the money and that was just the way that I needed it to be. I'm a lot like you. I'll probably spend it if I see it. And, and so yeah. if I have a plan to put it away, I, I'm likely to save a lot more. So. so what I'm hearing you say is you don't have to invest $1,000 at a time or $1,000 a month or anything like that. So even if, even if you have a, well, time, I was a 17 year old kid, even you can even, you can work with somebody that young to be able to do that. So yeah, here, here in Madison, where the University of Wisconsin Madison is, I've helped some college students set up $10 a month investment plans or $25 a month. Obviously, I love seeing them put away 100, 200, 300, right, but, right. but if, if we can get it started with just something, and again, saving is a habit, investing is a habit, but so is not saving or investing. Right, right. So, so what I'm hearing you say is probably one of the easiest, best things that everybody can do is just get on an auto savings. Yeah, okay? absolutely. Right. And work with a professional that's going to show them where it goes because- yeah, you can go on the internet and set up an auto savings plan, but does that mean that's the right place? Is it the best tax advantaged place? Are you going to pay tax? You know, are you going to get the maximum rate of return? So, so both of those automatic and work with a professional. Right, right. And, you know, I think about it as, as a network marketer, um, you know, some of you are just starting out. Some of you are more established. Uh, when we work together, I, I help to reduce costs, make sure you're investing your time and your money wisely. But, you know, I grew up in the day of the first thing you should do is always pay yourself. And, you know, we, I set up budgets with people to say, okay, how much are you going to invest in your samples and, and in your marketing and that type of thing. But definitely one of the budget lines that I talk about is that you need to pay yourself. I mean, so, you know, I, I still go by the old, uh, the tithing of 10%, you know, I, I'm, I, I think I, sh I'm my favorite charity. I always pay myself Amen. first. So. Amen. You know, when I got started, I was putting away $230 a month. I remember back in 1996, my first investment program, $230 a month. And by the way, I saw that grow substantially. That was in the late nineties. It was a good time to be investing. Um, and, and, and now I'm saving over 5,000 a month. So it became a habit I, and I'm right. now at a different income bracket, but again, it's a habit, whether you do it or not, it's, it's a habit. And unfortunately, most people have the habit of not doing it. Absolutely. And to your point, you know, you, when you're running a business, you got a lot on your plate, plain and simple. Yeah. Um, and to have to worry about that. And all I know is I like, I like getting my statement. I like getting a text from you to say, hey, this is, this is where it's at. But, but I, one of the things that I think is so important is that it is about the habit and it is about the part that you don't have to invest a lot of money. But, but I'm a huge believer in residual income. And then this is another way to get that residual income. You know, um, real quick, Janet, I'm going to sure. just share. You've all probably heard of the book Cash Flow Quadrant, which yeah. talks employee and self-employed. And then the right side of the quadrant is business owner and investor. Business owner and investor are the two quadrants that are passive income quadrants. That's what I teach people to do, not just to, to build a great business that creates passive income, but also to have investments growing that, that creates passive income. Right. So, right. sorry. That was That's all right. That's a client calling you that wants, wants your help. Um, so, so working alongside an expert, um, that's, that's what you do. And um, can you tell us a little bit about when you're working alongside an expert, maybe specifically you, what you do to help somebody to um, start, even if they have nothing, what, what's the process that you follow? Sure. So we have a process, it's called FNA, it stands for Financial Needs Analysis. And in about 20, 30 minutes, I can sit down with someone, help them set some goals, identify things that they want to accomplish and by when, like own a home, be financially mm -hmm. independent, retire, et cetera. And then we go through these six steps. We look at their cash flow, how much they make, how much they spend, their debt, 
Step three is emergency funds. Step four is protections. We identify what they have or don't have for insurance. Step five, my favorite step is the investment step, how to grow and accumulate assets. And then step six, do they have an estate plan? When we go through those six steps, when I went through those six steps 25 years ago, I'm like, oh my gosh, everyone needs this. And almost no one I know is doing this. In fact, I didn't know anyone who actually was working with someone like me that actually takes them through that right. process. And because we don't charge a fee, I always say the worst case scenario is you're going to get some, some complimentary financial advice and education. And if you do decide to do business, the companies that we help place your business with, they compensate us. So that's how we get paid as a financial advisor. I'm a fiduciary, which means I actually get paid assets under management by the companies I help people work with. Sure, sure. So, so somebody can sit down with you and then you tell them what to do. But, but I, I just cannot stress enough to our listeners that if you are not saving automatically now, you need to start. Whether, however you decide to do it, but it's not something that I'm an expert at. I don't want to be an expert at it. So tell us again how how much you charge to do that analysis. Cause I remember sitting down with you and it, it was very in depth and man, you got me thinking big time, big well, time. I, I, I was saying, if it's free, it's for me. That's probably why I sat down for free 25 years ago and, and actually went through that six step process, became a client, then decided this was the career I wanted to pursue. And so at no cost, if someone sits down, the worst case scenario is they're going to get some financial education and advice. And in 25 years, I've yet to have one person say that was a waste of time. And, right. and, and if we show some ideas, there's a reasonable chance they're going to say, hey, I, I need to set up that tax-free Roth IRA or oh, I want to get that kind of life insurance with living benefits that, that protects me even if I don't die. So those right. kind of things at no cost, we will share those ideas with. Right, anyone. right. And then you can help people set up auto auto savings. It's the, it's the, I, I can't imagine doing it any other way because if we're left to our own discipline, we often won't do it. So it's not going to happen. I mean, it, it is not going to happen. And, and um, as I said, as, as a home-based business owner, you know, it, it's the best thing in the world that you can be, but you've got, it is your business. And, you know, when you work for a corporation, They've got a 401k. This is about you creating your own 401k and you need to do that. And because I started at such a young age, number one, I'm able to do what I'm doing. But number two, I was able to buy, uh, buy my first house, you know, at 24 years old. There's all those things. But I, I, I don't like it. You know that. I just go, just tell me how much money I have. I, I think it's really, really important. So, um, so Tom, again, it's free. And uh, we will at the uh, uh, on the show notes, you will find all the ways to contact Tom, but he can help you no matter where you live. And I would encourage everybody to take advantage of it. But part of what I teach is I teach that financial management side and you do have to pay yourself. You do have to get all those different budget lines. Now, if you're doing if you're doing your business and you're not treating it as a business, that's okay. That that's up to you. But if you are serious about your network marketing business, you know, at the end of the day, you want to make money and it's not always just instant money. Mm -hmm. It's, it's what comes down the pike. So part of it is investing um, of your earnings. So any other words of advice you want to offer for everybody? Well, I just want to share when I got started 25 years ago, again, I was a client first, then decided part of my startup was I started saving and investing I figured out putting away $230 a month over my first four years, I put away about $11,000. And that, that was the year I crossed over my third year, a six figure income. And I owed uh, an extra 15,000 in taxes that I hadn't you know, set enough aside. Luckily my 11,000 had grown to 26,000 so I could access that and pay my taxes. Uh. A few years later, I crossed over a quarter of a million income and guess what? I found out I owed 32000 extra in taxes, but because I was saving and investing, I had the money I needed to pay those taxes. So that's another thing we have to be smart about as we're starting a business. As you start to make money, make sure you're saving money, paying your taxes. But if you ever get to a point like me where your income jumps pretty dramatically, 
and you didn't pay enough in taxes, if you've been saving, you can access that money for taxes. That's an excellent point. I have seen million dollar earners have to go into bankruptcy because they didn't have the money to pay the income tax. And you know, see, I'm a firm believer. I hope I always have to pay a lot in income tax because that just means you made a lot, but I mean, there's ways of, of paying less income tax. So and that's why I have a CPA too, that makes sure I do things right too. So, right. Yeah. You can't, you can't do it all. I mean, it's, uh, 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 you need somebody to do those things for you. And what, what network marketers are really good at is talking to people and sharing their earning opportunity and all of those different things. So, so Tom, we, we will get everybody all your information, but I would encourage all of our listeners, make sure you are on auto savings. If you want to know more about it, you can certainly reach out to Tom directly, but uh, don't spend your time on the internet trying to figure it out yourself. Have somebody else do it for you. So, and Tom's a great guy to be in your corner. So, so that's it for today, Tom. We appreciate you joining us today. Thanks, and uh, thanks so, so much. This is Janet Metzger with the Network Marketers Den, and we will see you on the side of success.